Let us talk about centrifugal pumps. What are they? How do they work? And how to obtain a head versus flow curve? They are used for the transportation of water in residences and in potable water supply systems. For the transportation of water and chemical products in laboratory and dosing systems, there are other types of pumps most suitable for this kind of job. We will talk about them in other videos. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus. I am a retired professor of hydraulics. Now, I am a consultant engineer of many companies that deal with hydraulics applied to sanitation works. Here is a centrifugal pump and its electric motor. Centrifugal pumps are among the most used equipment in industry. In fact, perhaps they only lose the first place for the electric motors. To explain how they work, let's imagine this cylinder and a pump casing under it. Now, let us put some water inside the cylinder and inside the cylinder too. And now, let us put the cylinder to rotate about its vertical axis. See what happens. The surface of the water will form a concave surface. It will go down at the center and it will go up at the edges. We can prove that the surface has a parabolic shape, or in fact, as it is a three-dimensional surface, we say that it is a paraboloid. But we will do that in another video. Now let us see what will happen when we put the casing of the pump into rotation. Well, we have to agree that it would be quite impractical. So, it will be better to rotate the water inside the casing using an impeller. See what will happen when we put an impeller inside the cylinder. When it rotates, the water inside the cylinder will form the same paraboloid that we saw when the cylinder was rotating. We can now make two observations that will be important in the study of pumps. The first is that the height that the water can go up inside the cylinder will depend on the impeller diameter. The height will vary with the square of the diameter. Also, it will vary with the square of the impeller rotation velocity. Ok, now let us take a look at this pump. Let us open its casing. There is the impeller. Let us put it in the vertical position and compare it with the cylinder we are studying. The first thing that we will do is to close the cylinder and put two piezometers on it as shown. From now on, the drawing will be shown in two dimensions. In this way, it will be easier to follow the explanations. First, we must put some water inside the system. It will not work if there is no water inside it. We say that we are priming the system. Alright, this will be sufficient. Now, let us start rotating the impeller. The water level will not be the same in the piezometers anymore. It will go up at the piezometer linked to the edge of the casing and down at the piezometer linked at the center. If the piezometers have the same internal diameter, the length that goes up and down will be the same. The faster the impeller rotates, the greater will be the length that goes up and down in the piezometers. Note that in this situation, the water level inside the internal piezometer is below the casing. So, this stretch is no longer necessary. Let us put this extremity inside the vessel containing water and bend the other one so that the water inside it can exit. We have just created a centrifugal pump. In many cases, it is installed with the axis in the horizontal position, but the working principle is the same. We will have a suction here at the center and the discharge here at the edge. Now let us run some performance tests with our pump. We will build the flow versus head curve of this pump.
But first, it will be necessary to establish some characteristics of the pump to be tested. In the nomenclature of its equipment, some manufacturers put here the maximum diameter of the impeller, and here the diameter of its discharge. It must be clear that we will run the test with the impeller of diameter d knock and with the rotation velocity n knock. Let us start the test with the flow control valve completely closed. The flow in the system will be zero and the pressure indicated at the discharge of the pump will be maximum. We call it shutoff pressure. Now we open the valve a little. Some flow will be allowed in the system and some relief that the discharge of the pump will be noticed. Now we open the valve a little more. The flow in the system increases and more relief that the discharge of the pump will be noticed. And we keep on doing this. Open the valve a little more, the flow in the system increases and more relief at the discharge of the pump will be noticed until we complete the curve. This is how the pump manufacturers obtain the curves that will be given to you. Of course, they will run tests like this for all the required impellers diameters of a given pump. Other tests are also important to fulfill the chart of the pump, such as the determination of its efficiency, its required net positive suction head, in short, NPSHR, and the power that it will require. But these are topics for other videos. Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Mark the bell so you can be notified of our next publications.